Hey guys, it's Sarah. Um, today we are going to talk about butterflies and Nancy is going to have some images pop up over here as I talk so I'm going to try and lean this way so we can understand it. Alright, so we are going to talk about three different things today. First thing is all about butterflies. Then we're going to talk a little bit about gardening and how to attract butterflies to your home. And the third thing is butterflies in art and symbolism of butterflies. So today our inspiration that's tied to the museum is actually our butterfly specimens. So we do have quite a few of these. It's similar to the herbarium. And we also have some really awesome paintings of butterflies, particularly one that I have in mind is by Hunt Slonum. It's called Passages. So it's really, really pretty. Um, hopefully Nancy will show it right here. So we'll talk about that later. But first of all, butterflies, um, they are an insect. I'm sure you've seen them around your house. Um, some fun facts that I found for you is that the earliest fossil of a butterfly is actually a moth. It's from the Jurassic Age, and that moth lived over 190 million years ago. So they've been around for a very long time, and they were around while dinosaurs roamed the Earth, which is pretty cool. Um, they are the only insects to have scales on their wings, which I think is really cool. So all those beautiful colors you see are actually um, overlapped scales. Finally, another fun fact, um, there are about 750 species of butterflies in America, but there's over 17,000 types of butterflies in the world. So that's pretty cool. Today, Chef James and um, Miss Lindsay are going to talk a little bit about butterflies um, in art and as pollinators, which is really cool. So butterflies are one of the most important pollinators um, in nature. Just like bumblebees, they hop from plant to plant and the pollen gets on their wings and on their feet and as they land on new plants, they're pollinating each one of them. Butterflies drink nectar and they're attracted to bright flowers. Um, you can put out food for butterflies besides flowers because they will eat um, really, really, really ripe, juicy fruit. They love to land on that and you can see their little tongue sipping it. Next, we'll talk a little bit about preserving butterflies. So at the museum, we have butterfly specimens that are preserved similar to when we talked about the herbarium. So the herbarium that we have is plant specimens dried and pressed. We also have butterfly specimens and other insects and like bugs. Butterflies um, are very common to collect mainly because of their beauty but scientists collect butterflies as well because it tells us about the environment, tells us about the earth. So a lot of places, um, specifically in Washington DC and places like Cornell, they like to preserve specimens of butterflies the same way they collect birds and other animals and taxidermy. This is basically to show scientists what's around and what it, the um, animal looks like if it were to go extinct. So for example, we have in the museum um, a taxidermy specimen of a passenger pigeon. Well now passenger pigeons are actually extinct. So scientists can come from all over the world to see our example of a preserved passenger pigeon because you'll never see one again in the wild. And while we hope that doesn't happen to butterflies, it is important for scientists to save specimens. So it's a popular hobby, a lot of people I uh, like to preserve butterflies and catch them with a net and there is a whole way to go about mounting them and saving their bodies, but it's not really recommended for amateurs, which is the everyday person like me or you, because really it's not, it's not great to kill them anymore. Because now we have photography, we all have phones, um, there's drawings you can do, there's just a lot, there's a lot better ways to to think about butterflies and to save the memories of butterflies instead of killing them in the wild. Because now more than ever, we really need them. We need them to act as pollinators. So I don't recommend mounting butterflies, so I'm not gonna tell you how to do that, but I was gonna tell you a little bit about um, the ones that we have. So it was really popular during the Victorian era. 
to collect things and mount them and show them as a collection. So um, the Victorian era was during the life of Queen Victoria of England. So that's from 1837 until about 1901. So you can think of it as mostly the 1800s is when the Victorian era is. Victorian era people, so people living in that time, it was very popular for them to take up taxidermy as a hobby, um, butterfly mounting, bird watching, and also hair art. So they would take the hair of their loved ones and create jewelry and brooches and just big, beautiful art with it. So Victorian people, they do like some strange types of art. And we have some cool examples at the Museum of Victorian insect art where the insects are preserved. So it's kind of like this mix between science and art. Like they're a preserved specimen for science, but they're artistically arranged to, to look beautiful and to be pleasing to the eye. A lot of Victorian butterfly mounts are like this too. And I'll show you some examples next to me of um, how Victorian era folks would arrange butterfly mounts. We'll move on to gardening. So I have some examples with me. A lot of people, including my mom, love to make butterfly gardens. So that's planting types of plants that will attract butterflies to you, just so it's pretty, so you can see them around, so they can pollinate um, to encourage the growth of their species. I wanted to show you some examples um, if you wanted to create your own butterfly garden. I have been planting impatience, daisies, and um, cosmos because these are really bright flowers and they're the types of flowers that butterflies are attracted to as well as you can buy a butterfly bush or hydrangeas lilacs they like these really fragrant and floral things so i planted these a week ago and they're already so cute so this is my little plant for daisies they've been chilling back there in my windowsill and then i wanted to show you these as well so these are the cosmos, I think. Once these are big enough, I'm gonna take them out of this egg carton and plant them around my apartment, and hopefully this will draw more butterflies to my house. So I love to see them, we love pollinators. So um, I just thought this would be cute to show. Basically, you're gonna want plants that are brightly colored, have nectar, you're gonna want shade, and then also lots of sunlight. So that sounds like two different things, but shade meaning we want diversity in plants so that the butterflies can feel safe and can hide. But the butterfly garden should get at least six hours of sunlight a day because they are cold-blooded insects and they like to bask in the sun and warm themselves in the mornings. I'm sure maybe you've seen a butterfly just kind of land somewhere and very slowly open and close their wings. They're actually kind of chilling in the sun to, to warm up, which is really cute. Um, moving on, running out of time, I just wanted to talk about butterflies and art and butterflies, the symbolism of it. So a lot of people think that butterflies represent the soul. So um, there's old Chinese and Japanese omens that would say that if you see a butterfly around, that means that it's someone who has passed away and they're visiting you. So it represents the freedom of the soul. Um, a lot of people also like to paint butterflies as symbols for new life or new beginnings. So for example, Hunt Slonum, we have one of his pieces, Passages, um, on display at the museum right now, and it depicts super colorful, very textural butterflies, and it's one of my favorite pieces in the museum. So we'll show this here so you can see that. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to send me an email, go on to the Google Classroom. There's a lot to talk about and I wasn't sure what we wanted to spend time on. So I figured I'd tell you a little, some fun facts about butterflies, about gardening and preserving, and then also um, butterflies, the symbolism in art.